Hi everyone, it's Gina Kay from Gina Kay Designs and your host of Stamp TV. And tonight, I'd like to welcome you to our release party presentation video. I'm going to show you several brand new stamp sets, some new die sets, and a brand new mini kit. And if you're watching during our release party, you can click the links under the screen to be taken to things like our contest questions, our release party challenge, and our party chat thread, where the design team is there sharing beautiful card projects featuring the new stamps and dies being released tonight. And all of the products are now available in our online store at GinaKDesigns.com so you don't have to wait to shop. So let's get right into it and I'm going to show you the first new stamp set. This first new set is the brand new Fabulous Rose Frame by Melanie Menchinger. This fabulous rose frame features a classic and exquisitely detailed floral frame that fills up your card front in such an elegant way and lends itself to so many different coloring techniques, embossing, and stamping. The bold label, which fills the belly band and oval in Melanie's best-selling Fabulous frame, can be used separately or layered over the rose frame in a number of ways to create different layouts. So many ways to fill this gorgeous label. The matching die sets available take these stamps to another level. So let me show you those. Here is the Fabulous Rose Frame die set. Now this has eight dies and there's wonderful layering possibilities with this fabulous rose frame stamp set. The largest die measures about three and three quarter inches by four and three quarter inches, which will definitely fill the entire A2 card front. There's an extra stitched circle in there so that you can pair it with other Gina K design sets and you can mix and match with the fabulous labels die set for stunning layered projects. Now here's another die set that also coordinates with this same stamp set, and this one is called Fabulous Labels. These three must-have dies provide gorgeous layering possibilities and are a spectacular way to showcase any image or sentiment or to add interest and dimension to your card layouts. This label die coordinates with the following stamp sets, Fabulous Frame, Fabulous Frame Fillers, Fabulous Holiday Fillers, and there's even more to come. So that is the new collection by Melanie Menchinger. Now I want to move on to the next stamp set and look at this beautiful stamp set. This is the brand new The Wetlands 2 by Teresa Momber. Now we all know Teresa Momber has been creating beautiful scene making stamp sets for years and this is her newest one in her collection. The Wetlands 2 is filled with beautiful wetland creatures and elements to create beautiful autumn scenes and beyond. Mix and match these stamps with her other sets and the possibilities are endless. Now we have another cute little stamp set by Beth Saleka. Check this one out. This adorable set by Beth is filled with sea creatures that are sure to please. Look at all of the cute little critters in this set. These stamps mix and match with Beth's, Beth's other Sea Life sets to create underwater cards for all occasions. And, al and although Beth has been naming her sets after her children, her nieces, and her nephews, this one is named after her number one, her husband Todd. And that might even be in one of the contest questions, you never know. Here is the brand new stamp set by Claire Brennan, and I just have to flip this one over so you can see how big it is. Look at that gorgeous flower. This set is called Perfect Poinsettia. Claire Brennan's been knocking it out of the park with her layering flowers lately, and she just designed the first 2017 holiday set for Gina K Designs called Perfect Poinsettia. This huge, gorgeous flower is perfect for coloring and layered stamping and embossing and more. You have plenty of time to get a huge jump start on your holiday cards, and Perfect Poinsettia will be a must-have this holiday season. And here is our newest incentive stamp set. And here I'm going to flip it over so you can see the actual size. Our pictures on the front are a little bit smaller. So this stamp set is called Nurturing Blooms. This little set is perfect for card makers who need to send cards of encouragement and more. And these beautiful autumn wildflowers will make perfect soft focal images against a blended sky. Or you can use these images for coloring and embossing techniques. This set is yours free with any $75 purchase and it will automatically ship to you with your qualifying order. There's no need to put it in your cart. 
So next I have the brand new Stitched Flowers Mini Kit. Now I'm going to show you the Stitch Flowers mini kit and then I want to also show you two add-ons to the mini kit so we'll get to that in a minute. But let me show you everything that's inside. First of all when you open it up it's all wrapped in tissue paper and it's got this cute little sticker on it and I'm going to break the seal so we can see what's inside. Okay so you're going to get six of the Gina K Designs white envelopes you're also going to get this sticky dot runner by Thermoweb and I just love this tape runner. It's my favorite. In fact, I've been begging them to make me a bigger one. So if you uh, haven't tried it yet, you've got to give this one a try and then you'll know when they make me the bigger one how great it is. All right, and then I'm going to grab just a piece of paper here. This is paper that I was working on and I'm just going to hold that up there. You see how beautiful this big stamp set is. This is the stitched leaf stamp set. And it's got four bold solid leaves and then it's got four open leaves so you can color these you can layer them together you can emboss you can do a variety of things this set also has two bold greetings it's got a friend and a thankful and then you can mix and match these with these lovely greetings that work with both of them. So thankful for your kindness, thankful for you. I'm so thankful for all you do. You can mix and match them in different ways. Up here you can do best friend, caring friend, you're a wonderful friend, and thank you for being a friend. I love that one. I always hear the Golden Girls theme song when I see that one. Okay, and then along with this stamp set, you're going to get this big die set that will cut all eight leaves. So. The, these four dies will cut both leaves either singly or layered together and then you're also going to get the shadow layer for the word friend and the shadow layer for the word thankful and that's going to allow you to do some really cool techniques and I will have videos on those techniques coming up. Let me show you the cardstock that you get. Let me move this out of the way. So you're going to get two sheets of honey mustard you're going to get two sheets of tomato soup, two sheets of fresh asparagus, four sheets of our layering white, four sheets of our charcoal brown, and then six card bases in the heavy base weight white. So this is the entire stitched leaves kit, enough to make lots of beautiful autumn cards. And the thing I really like about leaves, leaves are good all year round because leaves are kind of the masculine flower. So anytime you need a masculine card, you can use leaves instead of flowers to do a lot of the similar techniques. So let me slip these items back in my box here. It's nice to have this little box to keep everything in. This way when it's time to stamp, we can stamp together here on Stamp TV. Now I want to show you those two other dies that I was talking about. So in that stamp set you had a large thankful and a large friend and I also did them in dies. So these are add-ons. You can purchase these separately and then you can either cut the word out or if you don't want to cut the word out you can use the stamp that's in the kit and you can stamp the word and then you can cut the shadow layers. So it gives you some versatility where you can mix and match. And also the thankful and the friend die they're great for your collection because you may have some older greetings in your collection that you feel like you want to kind of jazz them up a little bit. Maybe you have something that says thanks for being my friend. Well you can mask off the word friend and just stamp the thanks for being my in that stamp and then you can add the friend die cut. You can do the same thing with thankful. So it kind of jazzes up and modernizes stamps that you may already have in your collection. So these are a great value. Now now that you've seen this kit, I'm going to put this aside with the other stamp sets, it is time to make the first project. So I'm going to start with the stamp set and I have a few tools here. I'm going to use the add-on thankful die because I want to show you how cute that looks. And then I'm going to do a little technique using some of the oxide inks. Now I know a lot of people have been really jazzed about oxide inks and I think they're really fun too. And I haven't really done any videos on them so I want to show you a technique using this set. So I have the Wild Honey and Fired Brick oxide inks along with the Stitched Leaf stamp set and the thankful die. I also have a sponge dauber, 
Then I have a charcoal brown ink pad. I have a, a sweet corn ink pad, and I have an ocean mist ink pad. These are the Gina K Designs ones. I also have a quickie glue pen. I have some adhesive. And then I'm going to use some of the Gina K Designs fine detail gold embossing powder. I also have a Versamark pad. I have my embossing magic pad with a clothespin to hold my cardstock. And then I also have a paintbrush just to brush away any embossing powder anywhere that I don't want it. I have an extra acrylic block just in case I need it. And then I have this water brush. I'm just going to use this to dab onto the oxide inks if I don't, if I have any missing spots. Then I have some water. I'm going to use the Tim Holtz Distress Sprayer. You can use any water bottle, but that's the one I happen to have here in my craft space. And then I've got some extra cardstock here, and I'll show you what I'm going to use that for. Now, the cardstock I'm going to use for this card is some of the Gina K Designs white cardstock. This is the layering white. I also have a piece of the um, charcoal brown, and then I have a white card base, and then I just have a backup piece here in case something gets messed up along the way. And then I'm going to use my Misty and my Mini Misty. So let me grab the Misty, and we're going to load some stamps onto this thing. All right. So I'm going to back up just a little bit and lay this piece of cardstock in here where I want it. I'm also going to grab my paper cutter in a little bit when I get all done stamping, and I'll show you how I'm just going to trim this piece up. All right, so I have my magnets here, and I'm going to start with the bold stamps. So I'm going to use the four bold leaves. And I'm going to position them the way I want them, and I'm going to kind of have them going off the piece of cardstock. And here's a great use for your misty corners. So I'm going to put my misty corner right here in the corner, and then I'm going to slip my cardstock in here. And this way, if I want to have a leaf coming in off of the side, I'm not right up against the edge of my misty. All right, and I, let's see here. We'll put this one here. We'll put this one over here. And we have one more. We'll do this one here, like that. All right. And then I'm gonna fill in the areas with that little stamp block when I'm done. Okay, so this is a great way to stamp all four stamps at one time. Get that back in position. And then what I'm gonna do is I am going to use the Wild Honey Oxide Ink. And I'm going to ink up the stamps just by patting that oxide ink pad right onto my stamps. All right. Then I'm going to grab the fired brick, and some of you are going to gasp when I do this, but it's okay. I've been doing it a lot, and it's not ruined my ink pads. I'm just going to go right on top of that just to add some other color. Now, if you get any on there, it's okay. I just have a scrap piece of paper here. I'm just going to rub that off, and your ink pad will be just fine. So that doesn't worry me. I actually have not had any trouble with that at all. I'm going to fill in that little spot there, though. Okay. All right, and now I'm going to stamp those leaves. And I really want to put good pressure. Now, when you first get a brand new set of solid images like this, you're going to find sometimes that you might get some shallow spots until they're conditioned a little bit. And part of that is because there's always a little bit of coating on the outside of the stamp, on, on the face of the stamp, that might not have been completely washed away during the manufacturing process. But if you use the stamps a few times, you can use them with a little Versamark or just kind of wash them in warm soapy water. You'll get all of that off and then your stamps will be transferring great. Just those first couple of times you kind of need to condition them. But please don't sand them with a nail file or any sandpaper because that will ruin your clear stamps. All right, and here we go. I'm gonna peel this off. So there are those leaves. 
Now I'm just going to flip this around the other way, get it right back into the corner. Put my magnets down. These two magnets got stuck together. Okay, and I want to make sure that there's no overlapping, and there's not going to be. So I'm going to go back again and do the same thing. And if you're really worried about all that red, you can take a piece of paper towel and just kind of wipe a little bit of it away. Okay, so I'm going to ink these up again with the Wild Honey. And then I'm going to go back over it again with some of the fi fired brick. I think I called it faded brick because that's my color is faded brick. Okay, and now I'm going to stamp that again. And again, putting good pressure on it. Now I can, you can tell that I've used these stamps quite a few times now because they are getting a great transfer, but maybe there'll be a little spot I can show you. Okay, there you go. There's a spot I can show you. So I'm just going to grab my water brush and I'm going to grab a little bit of that fired brick and I'm just going to color in there. There's a little spot there too. You won't even notice that. Okay, so that's how you do little touch-ups. Now I'm going to grab that loose block and I'm going to just pick one of these leaves. I think I'll do this one. And I'm going to do the same thing. Add a little bit of the wild honey and a little of the fired brick. And just stamp that right in that little missing spot there. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. But I'll use the other side where that ink wasn't transferred yet. I'll just add that right there. Okay. So now I have some pretty cool looking leaves here that are ready for step two. Now I'm using my Misty mouse pad, so I can just wipe this ink off with a little bit of water. You can also use something like Windex or whatever you want, but the mouse pad is very convenient. That is one thing I just love. All right, and then I am going to just put these aside. I probably should clean them first. I'll just clean up with a little bit of water here. Okay, and we'll get rid of these stamps. Okay, now we're going to add the second layer onto this panel. So I'm going to put that back in there again. And I'm going to secure it with my magnets. And then I'm going to use my embossing magic pad and just rub all over the surface. The thing that's really cool about these oxide inks is they're very much like pigment ink because they're so solid and you can stamp on dark colors and you can do all kinds of fun pigment ink techniques. However, they dry very quickly like a dye ink. I would have never been able to do that with just a regular pigment ink, go right over it with that embossing magic pad and not even I didn't even get any ink on it. So you can see how quickly it dries. Now I'm going to use the stitched versions of these stamps. And I'm not going to worry about laying them spot on because I want this to be very whimsical. So I'll just get it close. You can see what I'm doing here. Just getting them close. And then I'm going to use some Versamark and some gold embossing powder. All right. So we have that. Let's see how that looks. I'm going to pick them up, make sure everything's tucked in. I'm going to pick them up. Ooh, those two didn't pick up very well. I must not have cleaned them very well. All right, we'll try that again. I have to put a little more pressure on them. Okay. And now I'm going to reposition everything again, and then I'm going to grab that Versamark. 
I'm going to ink these up real well with some Versamark ink. Okay. Now I'm going to stamp those right over those solid ones. And then I'm going to grab just a folded card here. Take this out of my Misty and onto my folded card I'm going to use the embossing powder. So I have the gold fine detail embossing powder and you can see now that there's detail on top of those leaves. So let me put this back and then we're going to emboss that. Just make sure there's no globs of embossing powder anywhere where you don't want it. Okay, so now you can see those are all nice and shiny. We're just going to flip that around and we're going to do the other side. Okay, and I'm going to grab my Versamark pad again and ink these up. And then stamp them. Did you see what I just almost did? Got to flip that around. Whew, what a save. Okay, and then stamp those again. And again, we're not worrying about them being spot on. I want them to be a little bit more whimsical. You can really take the time to position them so they're perfect if you want them that way. Okay, then I'm going to do another layer of embossing powder on this side. And you can see there's a little bit of embossing powder in a few places that I don't want it. So I'm just taking a paintbrush. Just to remove that before I heat it. Once it's heated, it's not going to be very easy to get off. You can actually scratch some of it off with one of the mono sand erasers, but it's really better and easier to just do it ahead of time. I'm not quite done with this embossing powder yet, so I'm not going to put that away. But I am going to emboss these first. This is so cute. All right. So now you can see that all of those leaves are embossed and I just have my two little remaining areas. So I can put my Misty away for now. And then I can stick this one on the block and do the same thing. Just ink that up. It's almost hard for me to stamp with a stamping block now. I'm so used to the convenience of my Misty. I'm going to use that there and this one over there. We'll see how that transferred. <sighs> okay, and then I'm going to emboss those. All right. So now one of the cool things about oxide inks is that they react to water. So if you spray them with water, you're going to get kind of water spots on them. So I'm going to do that to these leaves now that everything's all embossed. I'm going to take my water bottle 
Let's zoom in just a little bit here so that you can see it a little closer. And I'm going to just spray some globs of water on that and give that a minute to process. And you can start to see it's getting a little bit more mottled looking. And I'll definitely take a picture of that so you'll be able to see it up close in the photo. Then I'm just going to take a paper towel and just blot it. Get rid of some of this excess water. And then I'm going to dry that using my heat tool. Now you can certainly do this technique on watercolor paper if you prefer, but I kind of want the paper to look a little bit rough and damaged. I'm going for a more antique kind of look. And you want to be careful when you're doing this part not to kind of hold it over any one area too long because you don't want to burn the embossing powder. You just want to dry that paper. But you probably can see some of the texture that's coming through now. Still have a few wet spots and you can also turn it over and dry it from the back. That prevents some of the warping. All right, I think we're pretty dry there. Okay, so now I am going to go on to my next step here, which is to add a little bit of color into the background. And I'm going to do that with the sweet corn and the ocean mist. I would have never chosen to use these colors together, except I made a mistake. And um, that mistake proved to, to really be a, a good mistake. So I'm going to clean off this sponge dauber that I was using earlier. I started with the sweet corn, but I didn't like the way it looked, so I went over it again with some ocean mist and it turned out to be the perfect color. So I'm going to grab a bunch of sweet corn ink and then I'm just going to kind of stamp in and around the leaves like that. And I wanted to like this, I really did. I wanted to like it by itself, but I just thought it was too much of the same. It just, I had so much yellow in the leaves from that wild honey that I really didn't need that much more yellow. So that's my first color. I'm going to clean off this dauber and then I'm going to grab some of the ocean mist. And this is where I thought it really took a turn for the better. So now I'm going to do the same thing just in those areas in between the leaves. I'm trying not to go over the leaves themselves because I really don't want to change them too much. So there is that background. You can still see all of that shine. Now I'm going to grab a piece of paper towel, just a little piece here, and I'm going to rub over the surface of my leaves to get rid of anything that's kind of stuck on that embossing powder. And you can see all the roughness now because of the water that was on there. It's not a smooth blend. It's very textured. All right. So now I'm going to grab my paper cutter. And we're going to cut this piece down. So I have a layering piece here. And this is going to go down to four and a quarter, but I'm not going to cut it all at once. I'm going to cut like a little bit off of each side to get it down to four and a quarter. Is that four and a quarter? Is that what I want? Let's see. Yep, four and a quarter. So let's go down to four and three quarters. And we'll flip it around to four and a half. And we still need to take a little more off. So we'll go down to four and a quarter. And then I'm going to adhere those two pieces together. I want it to have a little bit more even off of both sides. So I'm going to just use some of my ThermoWeb adhesive to adhere these pieces together. And then we're going to add a greeting. Now it's time to add the greeting. 
So I have my mini Misty already set up with the greeting in it, and I'm just going to use the words for you. And I'm going to stamp those directly onto my card base. So I'm going to slip my card base here into the mini Misty. And I'm just going to look at it and make sure it's where I want it. You can see it's right down here at the bottom, and that's where I want it. So I'm going to ink that up using some of the charcoal brown ink. And I am going to get a piece of paper towel and wipe this away because this card base is a little bit raised. And then I'm going to stamp my greeting. Perfect. I'm going to grab that out of there and put my mini Misty aside. And then I'm going to adhere my panel up here on the card like this. I'm going to use a little bit of extra tape just because that piece was a little bit wet. So now it should be all dry now. There we go. And now it's time to add the big thankful greeting. So because this is all different um, layers, it I couldn't really stamp on there and get an even stamp. Plus, you probably wouldn't see much of it over this piece of charcoal brown because it would just absorb right in. So that's why I decided to use the thankful die. So I cut three of these out three times and then using a quickie glue pen I glued them all together. And if you want to see how I do that, you can watch my uh, Misty Boho Flowers video that I posted just a few days ago, and you can see how I get the pieces all lined up together using a quickie glue pen. But I'm going to use the quickie glue pen again, and I'm going to just add glue onto the back. And if you have trouble, you can just dot it on. Sometimes dotting it on works a little bit better, especially in the really skinny areas. So I'm just dotting this on. And Quickie Glue goes on blue, but it does dry clear. So if any of it oozes out, you won't see it once it's all dry. All right, almost done. OK. So now that I have that glue on there, I'm going to grab my card. I'm going to position this where I want it. I want, want it to go right about here. Just going to drop it in place and press on it. Now, what you can do is if you use a glue pen like this and you want everything to just kind of get a little pressure on it, here's another great use for your Misty. Just lay it on top and let it dry that way and that kind of helps to press everything down so you can use just a little pressure but you can see there is my finished card and I had made another one earlier I used a different leaf pattern but depending on which leaves you like and how you want to do it that's just two different leaf patterns of the same card and that is my finished card project I hope you've enjoyed tonight's release party presentation. Stay tuned to Stamp TV for tons of new projects featuring the new Stitched Leaves mini kit. And thanks so much for watching.